Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this one we're looking at the Optima HD28 DSE. Now as you may have seen on my channel, I've not actually covered a projector before, so this is a bit of a new thing for me, so please bear with me as I go through this. Just as a quick side note, if you do look to get this projector, it's now been replaced with the HD29 Derby. They've actually brought out that version to replace this one because it's taken me quite a long time to actually do this video, so apologies for Optima for that. But what I will do is actually link the newer relevant model in the description box instead. So before I actually get into the specs and everything about the actual projector itself, just want to go over a little bit of background on my kind of thoughts and opinions on projectors. So until this point, no, I said until this point, I've kind of looked at projectors, but not really kind of in depth because I've always seen them as, you know, you always have to have a very dark room to see them in their kind of best potential. Most of the ones just remind me you see in college or school that are just kind of bland and they don't look very good just overall. But let me just say this projector changed all that. I'm going to leave it there for that until the end in my conclusion. But yeah, this is definitely an absolute beast. So key things to note about this one. It's a native 1080p DLP projector with a 3000 ANSI lumens bulb. That's got a massive 30,000 to 1 contrast ratio, which coincidentally is what I've got on my television. So that should say it's got a really good range there. Now the lamp that's included, you get a potential 8,000 hours, which is 10 years. Ridiculous. <laughs> You're more likely to upgrade to the next generation and actual projectors rather than change the bulb in its lifetime. You've also got options to go from dynamic, eco and bright mode. And then the bulb life varies from 8,000 to 4,000, depending on which mode you're using. You've got a throw range from 1.48 to 1.62 to 1. Now, if you're actually looking to buy one of these, then that's the key information you're going to need to know about how you're going to position it. It does have two 10 watt integrated speakers. I will go in more in depth on those later. And then you've also got two HDMI 1.4B ports. Now, as you can see, going through the clips here, we've got a number of different features available by physical buttons. There is also a remote control included as well, which is quite nice. Okay, so one thing I do want to touch on is the color of this projector. Obviously you can see here it's gloss white, but I really think they need to make a black one. If they could do matte black, that would be absolutely fantastic. Because personally, I'd picture this in like a home cinema room, or you know, just a room you've designated in your house to actually use this projector. And I think white just doesn't really fit. You want a nice stealthy dark color that's gonna blend in with the environment. Some products do fit white quite well, but I think something of this size, just black looks better on it anyway. So yeah, I would like to see a black for these projectors. Now in terms of me setting this up, it was so simple, just simply adjusting the zoom, obviously to stretch how far out you want the image on your wall. Personally for me, I used the office wall as it's a plain gray wall. It's pretty much the perfect surface you can get, apart from obviously buying an external screen or something to use instead. And then obviously the focus speaks for itself. Now because I can't really set this up permanently in the office while I was testing it, I had it on my desk, which is slightly lower than you probably would want it ideally. So what I did for that, I compensated by shifting the image so it kind of took it out of more of a V shape and then obviously squared it out to how it should be. But just going through the menus, I could adjust that and it literally took me all of five minutes to set up. Now one thing you will notice on this projector, there's loads of cutouts for ventilation, which is always good. The projector bulbs can get quite hot, so it's nice to see that this one's ready for it. So looking a bit more depth into the ports that are available on this projector. Now I did mention there's two HDMI ports available. One of these is actually MHL enabled, which means you can actually charge certain smartphones when you're actually running HDMI for them. The only downside to that though is that you actually have to have a compatible smartphone that has it. You've also got ports on there to do audio out, so maybe to a soundbar or a 5.1 system, something a bit more than the built-in speakers, which I'll cover also in the conclusion. You also have a 12 volt out as well as USB power as well, so you could go from a maybe a memory stick or even a Chromecast. There is also the option to do full 3D on this, but I don't actually have the rest of the equipment to test that, unfortunately. And personally for me, I don't really like 3D that much. When it did come out, it wasn't something that really took my fancy. So the included remote control is okay. It will do the job for what you want. It also has a blue backlight as well. So you're gonna be able to see it in the dark with no problem. Using this helped me set up the projector really easily. And I didn't have to point it directly at the projector as well, which is also a bonus. On the bottom of the projector, you'll find three little adjustable screws that allows you to change the tilt and angle of the projector especially handy if you're using it down low and you need to angle it up or even vice versa if you've got it on a shelf. It uses a straight kettle lead as well for power so should you lose the one that comes with it just get the one out of the kitchen. So we're not really far into the video but I've shown you around all the sides of the projector, the different inputs you've got. I think all I can really do now is explain my experience and overall thoughts on this projector. So in terms of setup as I said just doing, doing the zoom ring, the focus, then just shifting the slight angle adjustment to make the pitch less of a V and obviously give it the straight edges that you'd expect from a television, for example, to get that 16 by nine. Apart from that, which was about a five minute setup, 
that was pretty much all I really did. Out of the box, the picture of quality was just absolutely superb. Absolutely blown away by the fact that I can actually have my curtains open in the office during the day and just actually just watch whatever I fancied on it. The brightness and that contrast ratio just really helps. I didn't even have to touch the brightness settings to get that great color and picture during the day. So very impressed on that part. And that's where my expectation that it wouldn't be usable during the day was instantly dissolved. Personally for me though, just because the fact that everything's better in the dark when you're watching movies and things, when I did put my curtains up, it was also much better. Now one thing that really needs to be noted about this is the Derby setting that's on this. This is an image processor that's built into the projector. So basically if you were to pause this video now, now obviously I can't tell what resolution you're watching this video in, but if you go and put it onto 1080p and then switch it into 4K, that's the kind of difference that you can expect just by pressing this one button on the remote, which is ridiculous. Um, it, I, it's really kind of hard to explain what they do, as you can tell by my voice. I don't know how it works, but everything's so much sharper and it definitely gives that team crispy aspect. Considering this isn't a 4K projector, I feel like for this price point, it's going to be difficult to get yourself any closer. Now ideally I know you'd like to see some of the footage that this projector can throw out. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. For some reason my camera couldn't pick up the colour properly that was displayed by this projector. I think it's just because it's an LED bulb and my camera trying to capture that is, I don't know, there's some specific detail but I couldn't seem to get it so it actually displays it properly. So the footage you'll actually see shows basically colour bars on the screen it's clearly visible what the problem is and you can see that it's not right but to the actual eye those color bars aren't there it's difficult to explain but unfortunately i just can't show you the footage that it, it throws out which is a real shame because it's absolutely stunning so i am really disappointed and i'm sorry about that but i really can't do anything about it unfortunately what i would recommend doing though is looking elsewhere on youtube online see if you can find some other photos or videos to try and show just how well this can actually produce some quality but yeah mega mega bummer on that one i'm afraid so i ran a variety of different sources through this i did netflix amazon prime video 4k blu-rays from my macbook even though it's not 4k but still just for the quality uh, 1080p from my MacBook, Blu-ray as well from a PS3. Literally tried multiple different sources and just, just anything I tried, the visuals were just absolutely great with it. On the subject of visuals, obviously you're gonna need some audio to go with it. So there are speakers built into this and they're actually pretty good considering they're just for on a projector. Now bearing in mind if someone is buying a projector, it's more than likely gonna replace their TV or what they're currently using, which more than likely has built in speakers anyway. So you're obviously gonna to wanna to see the speakers on the projector as well. I think they are of comparable quality to television speakers anyway, so if you do make the shift, you'll definitely be familiar with the sound. But that being said, if you do have the option, I would recommend going into something bigger like a soundbar or even a 5.1 system if you can. Now in terms of ports and expansion, two HDMI ports may not be enough for everybody. Personally for me, I'm running everything into an Onkyo soundbar that's got I think five HDMIs on the back and then I run out to an external source anyway. So for me, if I had this in a permanent setup, I'd be using that. If not, then I'd probably be running an HDMI switcher anyway, just because I like everything to be on my kind of stand with just one output. So even if I swap a TV around, just the one HDMI that comes out of it. So it's a lot easier and a lot less fuss and hassle to actually swap everything over. But obviously there may be some people that want to do different HDMI sources and run them individually into the actual projector. So some people may want a few more, but in my personal opinion, two for me is just fine. I like the option of having the USB port. I think that's good if you're going to use something like a Chromecast, as I mentioned. But bear in mind, this may not be powerful enough to run something like the Amazon Fire Sticks. But I think one of the main selling points of this is, as I mentioned, if you are going to use this as a television, I think one of the great benefits of this projector though is because of the brightness level, as I mentioned, if you are using this instead of a television, you wouldn't set up a television and then expect to have to close the curtains to use it every time, would you? You just literally put it down, turn it on and expect to use it in any scenario. This projector does the same thing, which is remarkable. What you could do, for example, is have a smaller size set up for just general watching of your TV programs. Then if you want to go full movie theatre, then zoom it right out and get a nice big experience. Then because of the brightness, you can do that all during the day as well. So you've really got the best of both worlds. And I would definitely recommend this if you want to replace a TV. I'd have no problem in recommending that at all. So overall, a solid product from Optima. If there's anything you want me to answer specifically, then please let me know in the comments box below and I'll get back to you. Being the first time that I reviewed a projector, there may be some things that I've missed, so I'm always up for answering any questions you might have. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I will put links for this down in the description box below if you want to get one for yourself. Find me on Twitter and Instagram. My username is Jordan Ash Media. If you haven't subscribed already, Do it!
Thank you for opting for sending this out for me to review. I'll see you all in the next one.